Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt, and I'm joined by... Wait a minute, hold on a second. I do this fucking different every fucking week. It's fucking stupid. I'm including this. I'm joined by Tyler. He normally says his own name, but he can't do it today because apparently... I don't know. Uh, this is d dumb. This podcast, Tyler, between the two of us, almost never happened, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, Jackass over there was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I, I'm here like and as he has uh as he has three o'clock and then it's three fifteen. I'm like Tyler, where you at? And Tyler, where you at? And um, I never did get an answer till like six o'clock <laughs> at night. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's I was okay. sound asleep. And shit happens. So I recorded a solo one yesterday, just on my own. Uh, I'd done that you know before before Martin started with me. And it was fine, and it turned out, you know, well. Uh, and I went to edit it last night, and the damn thing, I, I realized that I deleted the video. Like, I had the audio, but I deleted the video. And I did that, so, for months, I've had people asking me to do a Rofi theming tutorial. And I spent over an hour working on that yesterday, and it just would not come out. It just... I was so pissed off at the end of it. I deleted every video in my video folder. Because uh, usually when I'm done with a video, I transfer it over to the other hard drive into a proper folder. But OBS always puts them in the videos folder when they're, while they're recording. And I was pissed off at the Rofi one, so I deleted all of them. Not even thinking for a minute that my podcast one was still in there. Yeah. So uh, that po that podcast, that solo podcast, is up in audio form only for patrons if you want to listen to it. It was good because I bitched about Tyler for 20 minutes. <laughs> I, I didn't actually do that. I, I did say some things like maybe he got stuck on a wagon. Uh, perhaps there was a sheep or something. Maybe he got attracted to a sheep. Uh, <laughs> breeding. I'm pretty sure I also mentioned something about breeding like rabbits. <laughs> I mean, you just say you were going to do rabbits. So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was many uh, insinuations of you having intercourse with your farm animals <laughs> so uh yeah um so the reason why i don't i'm not prepared for this podcast at all is because now it's a day later and my my mindset is not in podcast mode so what we've decided to do is talk about a little bit about our week in linux and our week in general because we both have things to bitch about and then we'll move on to the main topic which is uh, something very, very easy, because anything of difficulty would um, be well beyond us at this point. <laughs> so, uh, Tyler, after all that, <laughs> what have you been up to this week? Uh, well, to be honest, I well, I've been working on the wagon for most of the week. Um, and then yesterday, uh, or the day before yesterday, that night, I went over and hung out with a friend. Uh, we watched movies pretty much all night into the morning. Um, then I came back and did a little bit of stuff on the wagon. Um, and uh, I sat down in a recliner, which was a bad idea, and passed out and slept like a rock. Um, woke up, was like, oh, shit. Uh, um, Matt, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh that was how yesterday went. Yesterday was uh um I I really felt bad yesterday not only because I left you on your own but also cuz I sort of ruined like staying up all night ruined the day. I didn't get I wasn't able to put the wheels on the wagon, which I have those. I'm going to do that uh at some point this afternoon. Um but then today was an absolute nightmare. So I said that I was going to be here at three. I, I, and like we are recording this at my time. It's, it's a little bit after three. So we're recording. I was supposed to get off at work at two o'clock. I went in this morning. The truck got delivered. So I had to do all that. Then we had an inspector surprise inspection come. That was hectic. And then we had our busiest lunch we've ever had. We almost did a $500 lunch. It was an insane rush. And I mean, again, you got to think of it like this. We're selling mostly $6 sandwiches. So a $5, $500 lunch rush is within an hour is insane. Um, and then after that, we had Apparently, all of the band kids came into Subway, so I was not able to leave until like almost three o'clock. Luckily, another kid came in and I'm like, look, I've got to go. You take over. I'm clocking out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> then I got stuck behind a bus getting here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you've had a very, very good day. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, other than my recent, you know, deleting things that shouldn't be deleted, I've made the decision 
to use Emacs for a week. I saw that. Yeah, so uh, I'll be 100% honest in saying that, that the week has not started yet. <laughs> I have, I have, I downloaded it, but I haven't done anything to it yet. Like, I haven't had a chance just to sit down. It's been my own very long day. Uh, I don't even really want to get into it. But just I, Emacs is going to be an interesting experience. I think... That from the little bit I've looked at it, like last night, that I'll end up going to Doom Max because I, I'm gonna miss the them bindings so bad. But that's gonna be yep. a thing. Um, well, actually, I think one person commented on your short and and, and was like, to be like being completely honest, uh, um, I think it's I think he said Evil Mode or Doom, both are like pretty much necessary for Vim users. Yeah, I saw that too. Coming over to Emacs. Um, there was only one person who said that I, I think it was Schmoig or whatever the hell his name is, uh, who mm -hmm. said I had to use vanilla. Otherwise, I wouldn't be using the doing the true vanilla or Emacs thing. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I'm very worried about it because it's going to be so different. But it'll also be an interesting experience. So also. Uh, my next long-term review is going to be Fedora, so I got to install Fedora here pretty soon. So I may end up doing my Emacs and Fedora both uh, at the same time. <laughs> so I should be doing that's going to be interesting. Emacs on Fedora. <laughs> so <laughs> that'd be uh, uh, that'd be very interesting to see how that goes. Um, if, if everything goes well, I'll be recording the podcast next week from Fedora. Uh, if that doesn't, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Obviously, if I can't get everything to work, Wayland, uh, I will be mm -hmm. logging back into my Gruda instance. Because I guess I should talk about that because we didn't have a chance to talk about that uh, last time we did a podcast. I was talking about how I was going to switch from Arco to Gruda to try to fix the keyboard issues. Uh, turns out that is a hardware problem, not a software problem, which is very disappointing for me. Um, it's it. it it doesn't do it as often on Gruda as it did on Arca, where it just randomly disconnected. And now it seems to be uh, on first startup, like when I first you know boot up into my computer, or when it comes back from sleep after a certain amount of time. Those are the only times it does it on Gruda. And in Arco, it did it like randomly, like all the time. So I don't know what the hell is going on there. It's really, really weird. I've tried literally everything. I've tried plugging it into a different spot. I've tried different cords, tried different keyboards, uh, and it still does it. So it's obviously something wrong with the computer. But I'm honestly quite happy with my Garuda experience, experience so far because um, everything just seems to work. Like It's almost like I'm using Arco, but with uh, much brighter colors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm using the, the Dragonized version, so it has those ugly candy candy icon things mm -hmm. um those ugly icons that you're learning to love um they're fine uh i i switched out of i switched away from them though uh oh. I mean, it doesn't really matter because i don't use the the kde uh session anyways i just oh, installed okay. dwm so i'm using still using my dracula theme because i can't get away from it it's so good it's just so good all right you're not well you're not wrong <laughs> it's like it, it, like, like I, I thought for a minute there's because i'm still going to do that script where i can switch back and forth between things and, and that that script keeps growing in ambition but i haven't started it yet maybe i'll do it in emacs now i, I i'm moving it into uh a d menu script or a rofi script where i can just go through and choose a uh, choose a um a rice and then it will just switch um, if I can, if I can manage that, it'd be, it's going to be so cool, but I haven't started yet. So I keep talking about it. Like I'm going to do this, um, eventually. So anyways, that, that's it for it. Oh man. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wish to move on to the contact information. Uh, it, I, I'm going to have to go back to this so I can actually look at it. Cause I'm not going to remember shit. All right. You, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the Linux cast on Twitter. You can subscribe to all of our feeds and stuff like that, including audio and YouTube from the Linux cast.org. There are links to all the stuff right there. If you want, eventually, yes, there'll be a website. I say that every single week. Someday I'm going to just shock the shit out of everybody and say, Hey, Here's a website. It's all. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, not going to happen. Anyways, you can contact us via email at email at thelinuxcast.org. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'll thank our current patrons at the end of the show. You can find Tyler, who's getting, I mean, 
you're like 100 away now, right? Very close to 100 yep. away from 1,000 subscribers. So you can find his link to YouTube and Odyssey in the video description or in the show notes if you're listening to this on audio. And you can subscribe to the Linux cast at the Linux. I messed this up yesterday exactly the same way. Uh, you can subscribe to the Linux cast. Linux, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you can subscribe to Linux cast on YouTube at youtube.com slash Linux cast. We uh, surpassed 5,000 subscribers this last week. So that was uh, really exciting. Um, Congrats. Yeah. Uh, also shocking as hell. Still <laughs> just continues to shock me. Anyways, uh, that is it for the contact information. I managed through it, even though uh, I still fucked it up. Imagine that. All right, so we're <laughs> skipping the news this week. We are not going... Usually we do news at this point, but uh, usually the news is the section that we bullshit the most on, so we're going to bypass that, and we're going to move right on to our main topic, which is uh, kind of twofold. So we're going to talk about our favorite color schemes, and we're going to talk about five apps that we absolutely can't live without. So that's our task for today so we're going to start with color schemes and the rules here are that they have to be like named color schemes like solarized i don't think either one of us are going to choose solarized but i, I use that as an example uh, uh, mm -hmm. we can't just use one that we created because it uh, you know that's not an official color scheme or whatever i don't care all right so tyler what is your first color scheme that you really like my first one which i have a feeling both of us are going to uh at least say this if not this be our top favorite one for both of us mine is dracula for my top color scheme i think it's gorgeous it's highly readable it's just it's so good looking man it's so good totally agree and if you wonder what i'm doing i'm dr i got this gigantic water bottle <laughs> it's the most wait hold on hold on hold on is there water in it? there is water in it yes okay because I, I watched Two Bears, One Cave in your mom's house, and there's a comedian, Burt Kreischer, who walks around with one of those. And for the first time ever, someone asked him what was in it, and it was Kool-Aid. He had been walking around with that with Kool-Aid for forever. <laughs> Everybody thinks he was healthy drinking water. It's water. It's okay. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. All right, so I ordered... I had a, a smaller one, but it started leaking. So I ordered this from Walmart, and uh, my dumbass didn't realize that 64 ounces meant fucking huge <laughs> so this thing is the size of my head <laughs> anyways i totally agree with you on on dracula it would also be my top choice probably um god uh so I, i'll agree with you on dracula but i won't use it from one of mine we'll just oh okay i will say grovebox grovebox is a very weird color scheme for me I didn't like it at first. Like, I just absolutely hated it. I, I'm, I'm not a big brown color guy. Like, I don't care for the color brown. Mm -hmm. Um, But then I tried it. I was like, I, I think I tried it on a stream or something like that. And, like, yeah, man, it is gorgeous. It's so good. Um, I think, I, to, to be honest, I think you're the only person that's made Grubbox appealing to me. Yeah, it's, it's Before you, I tried it. I don't like it. Yeah, it's really good. Um, you gotta like stay away from the yellows and stick with the darker colors. Um, and the 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 light version of Grubbox is just fugly as hell. I mean, it's just not. No, I've, ne I've, I've never even looked at it. I don't want to. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a good looking color scheme. Uh, anyways, uh, your second one. My second one would now. This one might be weird for a lot of people because I don't normally use it. Um, I haven't used it in a long time, but I do very much like it. It's the Nord color scheme. Uh, or the Nord theme. Mm -hmm. It's it's very simple. It doesn't have a lot of colors in it, um, but I do very much like the blue aesthetic of it. It's very nice. Yeah. Um, if you don't like blue, you don't like Nord. <laughs> That's yeah, totally the yeah. only colors they have. Their variations of blue. Uh, so my second one would be uh, One Dark. I like One Dark quite a lot. Um, even if it did originate as a like a, a VS Code theme, uh, that which mm -hmm. is fine. Uh, I like it because, it, it, again, it's one of those blue themes, but it does have several other colors that just go really well with it. So One Dark is is a favorite of mine as well. So uh, your third one. Um, my third one is actually going to be um, similar. to. It has a similar type of aesthetic um, that, that Grubbox does, but it's actually the um, Minoki 
um, M O N O K A I, uh, theme. You can, you, if anyone doesn't, isn't familiar with this theme, you can find it on terminal.sexy, but it's, uh, it's a great theme. Um, it is brown sort of themed, but the colors in general, I really like them. Um, they, they make reading, uh, terminals really, really, uh, good. I just don't like Minoki is not a theme that I would use um, system wide. I, I think it works really good inside of terminals by themselves. Uh, that's typically where I like to use it. Now, what about your last one? All right. So my last one's going to shock some people. Uh, my last one is called Google. Um, Google. <laughs> it's called Google uh, because it has it, all the, the colors are Google colors from the logo. Uh, yeah. So it's called, if you go to, again, if you go to terminal.sexy and you choose the Google, it's the Google dark color that I particularly like. It has the, like the dark, uh, background, but all the rest of the colors are bright Google colors. Now it has nothing to do with Google. It's just that they took those colors from Google. It's really good. Um, it's, I don't think that I would make a whole rice out of it. Um, but it'd be an interesting, you know, Thing to see what it would look like as a whole rice it works really well in the terminal because it has the just the pure like dark gray background and then uber color or uber bright colors you know so it work, just works really well in, in, in the terminal and it also works well with transparency because a lot of times like with nord if you have nord a lot of those softer like green colors don't really work well with transparency uh, with the uh, Google ones, they're all really bright, you know, so it works well with uh, transparent uh, backgrounds. So it's good. Mm. All right. So I, I didn't want to, I mean, I don't think we could spend a lot of time on color schemes. We we only say yeah. so much about color schemes. That's why I chose only three and wanted us to just, you know, kind of fly through that section. Uh, but before we move on to apps, I've had an idea. And you know me okay. and my ideas. Now, our next challenge is going to be next week where we talk about uh, the GitLab thing. But the challenge after that is going to be a live challenge. There's going to be no preparation for that whatsoever. And what we're going to call it is Rice Wars. And what we're going to do, uh, I don't know if we'll be able to do this live. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't know how we would do it live. I think we're going to have to try to figure out how to do it and just record it. But basically what we're going to do is we're both going to take a vanilla window manager. We'll choose which one later. It has to be the same one, but we'll choose whichever one. It can be DWM, it can be Qtile, BSPWM, whatever. And we're going to start at the same time. And, and we're going to rice the whole thing from beginning to end. Whoever does it fastest wins. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, Rice Wars. I like it. Um, we now uh, we can also add in if you want to make it a little more complicated. Not just whoever gets to the end wins, but also whoever makes the best looking rice. Because we can choose. All it has to do is be the same window manager. We can choose different color schemes. Um, obviously, uh, it. Can, I think we'll ch say it can't be black and white. It has to have at least five colors. That way. Uh, you can't cheat and say uh, black and white because then you only have to enter two color values for everything. <laughs> that, that'd, be, that'd be cheating. So we'll have to we'll have to come up with some rules. But I, I've been thinking about this for a while, and I, I'm still not sure how we'll go about recording it and timing and stuff. We'll have to play around with it a little bit. But I, man, it sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Indeed, that does. I'm, I think that's going to be a lot more fun than the GitLab one that we're doing. Now, I mean, that one's good, but Rice Wars. That sounds pretty fun. Oh, man. It's it's gonna be one of those things where you know if it goes well, we'll do that again because it, it, it just sounds like right up our alleys. And because I mean we're all, we're both always doing rice streams, so yep. <laughs> like it, it's gonna be. I don't I don't like I said I don't know how we'll record it. Maybe we'll just we'll we'll simul stream it both on our channels. You'll re, you'll stream it on yours, and I'll stream it, and we'll start simultaneous but that'd be hard for people to watch both of them so i don't know i like I said, i'm i'm not sure how we'll go through record it but because we're gonna have to figure out how to record it for the podcast as well so it's, that's gonna be a lot of pc power going into that one thing so it'll be, very, <laughs> so true. It'll be interesting to see how it goes anyways now that i've had my idea time uh and my brain can go back to sleep let's talk about five apps that we could not live without so uh your first app my first one is 
FFF. Um, it's the fucking fast file manager. And, um, I used to use Ranger. Um, then I used NNN for a bit. And before all that, I was using PC man FM. Um, now using FFF, I genuinely cannot live without it. It, 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 the, it uses Vim key bindings for everything. It's, I mean, the name is not wrong. It is fast as hell. Um, and as far as I know, most, uh, I, now I'm talking off memory here. I can't remember this. I might be completely lying, but as far as I know, it's written in primarily, if not all bash. So it's, it's just the best file manager I found. I love it. And that's my first app. Okay, I've never tried FFF. Now, I've tried NNN. I didn't care for NNN because you do all the configuration stuff through environment variables, and that always <laughs> bothered me. But, um, yeah, uh, I I still just use Ranger. And it works. It, yeah, it, it really does. And like I have it pulled up on a, in a scratch pad because, of course, I do. Um, mm -hmm. And it just works. So, um, anyways, so my first one is going to be Rofi. Uh, I, I could, it, you probably couldn't count the number of times a day I bring up Rofi in various different situations. Um, whether it's to bring up like the, emoji, the Rofi emoji thing where I can go through and choose from emojis or I bring up... Um, uh, a couple different scripts that will like to lead me to uh, different configuration files or literally just tons of different things that I use Rofi for. And they're all amazing. Uh, I, I, even in when I, even when I was using like, uh, like desktop environments or whatever, I would want Rofi there because it's the best menu system uh, bar none. Now I understand a lot of people like D menu and there's oh, nothing oh. wrong with D menu. Uh, but I really don't feel like going through and patching D menu. You know, like I have no interest in going through and patching that. So, Rofi is just the way it is. Now, uh, as I talked about at the beginning, like I think I think I did it after we started recording. Um, the theming it, I don't, I can't do a tutorial on it because apparently it makes me delete things unnecessarily. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, Rofi is my first one. All right, and for my second app, I have to be completely honest, mine is Flameshot. Um, I know we've talked about it before, but just in case anyone hasn't seen those or hasn't heard us talk about it, Flameshot is a great GUI application for taking screenshots, um, taking annotations, uh, drawing arrows on screenshots. You can take a screenshot using Flameshot and then edit it up and save it very fast. I really like it. It's it's it, to be honest, it is one of those tools where you start using it, you forget that you use it all the time. Like you genuinely do. Um, and, but I will go ahead and say, Flameshot is one of those programs where you're gonna, if you're going to use it, you probably want to have a sys tray. Just saying. Uh, yeah, I don't have a sys tray, and I use it all the time. So mm -hmm. um, again, you don't need one, but it is it, it is nice because it will keep running in the background. Yeah, it, and it, so that's true. But it also, if you want the other functions of of Flameshot, where you just take a picture of a screen or something like that, uh, the sys tray really does help. But if all you do, like like for me, all I ever do is the exact same thing over and over again, where you, you know takes the you know, it brings up the Full screen. Yeah. So, um, I have that to a, a key binding and that's how I do it. Now I understand that it's probably running in the background without me knowing it. Um, but I don't, I don't really care. And, but um, then again, it's also flame shot. It's a screenshot tool. So like it's eating up RAM in the background. Well, I mean, even if it was, I'd probably still use it because it's really, <laughs> really good. Um, yeah, I don't, when I was doing that open Sousa, um, review a couple times, I needed to take a screenshot and I kept because my my key my key binding for Flameshot is Control Alt and S, and uh, I kept hitting that like Flameshot, where the hell you at? <laughs> like <laughs> I forgot that I didn't have the key binding for it, and, or I didn't even have it downloaded, and it was uh, it was like I lost a, uh, an arm or something. Because I mean, I just <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know, off topic for just a minute, but do you have a folder where you keep all your screenshots? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm pretty sure like everybody does that does Linux and stuff like that because you're always taking screenshots. I mean, that thing has to be like 10 gigabytes full. <laughs> it's just yeah. crazy number of screenshots. It's so it, it I I did go through and organize them by year so that um 
Um, you, you are real organized over there. My my file structure, dude, is like anal retentive in terms of organized. <laughs> it's the most organized part of my entire life. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> like I can't. Like I have to have everything in its place on the file system. That, that's why snaps drive me so bad because they put the snap folder in the home directory. Like that just goes against everything OCD in my whole brain and just freaks me out. And immediately I have to download or, or delete it. So every time I do the apps of the week thing. Um, we're totally getting off tangent, but whatever. Uh, every time I do the apps of the after apps of the month thing, there's always one that I have to download as a snap. Like the last time, there was one app that was only available as a snap. So first of all, stupid fucking developer, I hate you so damn much. Uh, second of all, uh, I, I so I had to download Snap, use the app, record the video, and then I immediately uninstall Snap because that fucking stupid, mm -hmm. goddamn piece of shit folder in my home folder home directory i got i was so mad speak it <laughs> anyways uh <laughs> so uh yeah flame shot is great so my next one is going to be god it's really hard to choose i should i should have i should have had these written down and just chosen beforehand but uh my next one is going to be vim wiki uh, I pretty much keep all of my notes now on VimWiki. It used to be ZimWiki. ZimWiki is a GUI version of VimWiki. It's good, uh, but I decided that because I want to translate everything to Vim, I decided to download VimWiki. And it's just fantastic for organizing notes. Now, again, it's another place where I'm just uber organized. <laughs> uh, that's okay uh, i like how we both smile like uh-huh uh -huh. uh, the, the one week we forgot to, to silence the phones so i'm gonna do it now yes that's right uh, anyways um remember what i was talking about uh vimwiki it just has a ton of features and if you're in into markdown at all you can go through and keep your notes in markdown and i just love the linking structure like you can go through and link to different pages uh, it does have some flaws like if you're in the same vimwiki and you name two different links and two different structures the same thing uh the the newest one will link to the oldest one so that's a big bug and it really drives me nuts but uh, outside of that it's fantastic so that's vimwiki it's a plugin for vim Anyways, uh, your third one. My third tool or app that I use all the time would have to be uh, MPV. And uh, I bring up MPV and uh, most of us already have a video you know, player, audio player, whatever. Mo most people are probably using VLC. And I used VLC for the longest time. Um, but I just, I, I was talked into giving MPV a try and it, really is a night a night and day difference between VLC. It's much better. It, it it just is. It is much better. However, VLC, I mean it's got it, it it's got its own pros. Like look, everything's got pros and cons. But if you haven't tried out MPV and you need something to play music, play videos, MPV is most likely gonna be the thing for you. It is rock solid. Yeah, it's good. All right, my next one is Nemo. Now, Nemo is a graphical file manager, and it is by far the best one. And I will fight anybody who says otherwise. <laughs> it is so good. Now, I would make the argument that Dolphin would give it a run for its money if you didn't have to download the entire fucking KD stack in order to use it. Um, now it wouldn't be that big of a deal for me because I have KD installed, but if you don't and you want to use Dolphin, you have to have literally almost all of KD in order to, I mean, use Dolphin. So, uh, Nemo is the best one where you don't have to do that. And, uh, I love it because it has a ton of different features. It's fast. So it's not going to be like Nautilus where it literally eats your entire, you know, Ram, mm -hmm. all your Ram. Uh, and it has dual pane mode. Now there are several file managers out there that has dual pane mode but i use dual pane mode literally all the time I ne it, my nemo never goes out of dual pane mode and uh almost all, all the main one ha have like uh dolphin i think has dual pane mode uh i know pc man fm does um, but mm -hmm. i think pc man fm would be really good but when you have it in dual pane mode it has this stupid thing where the the pane that's not focused is highlighted 
uh, and mm-hmm. the thing that it, one that is focused isn't highlighted, and it's not just like highlighted on the board. The whole entire pane is highlighted. It's the dumbest thing ever. So, uh, yeah, Nemo is fantastic. I really wish that Linux would allow you to let the, have a system wide file picker where the when you have like an o- an open dialog in like Firefox or whatever, your chosen fire file browser would come up. That'd be yes. so, so cool. Unfortunately, you can't do that. So it means that every <laughs> single file man, every single application has its own file picker. So some of them are going to be GTK based, some of them are going to be Qt based, and then there's going to be whatever the fuck GIMP uses because nobody knows. <laughs> and it's just so fucking stupid. Um, I mean, it's it's literally the only app that uses one that looks like that, and it's trash. Anyways, uh, yeah, Nemo is my third one. Uh, your fourth one. All right, my my fourth one is going to be Dunst. Um, Dunst is a notification um, app. It's for well, giving notifications. Um, the great thing about Dunst or Dunst, I really like it because it's very easy to uh, to customize uh, to get looking exactly how you want it to look. And um, to be honest, I didn't like when it came to using like tiling window managers. If they didn't have a notification you know, thing, uh, system built in, which again, most of them don't, I don't, I don't really know that there's more than maybe one or two that do have one. Just, pre- I think awesome has one. Um, but most of them don't. And so I didn't use one for a long time and I, I gotta be honest, I can't go back to living without notifications and I can't go on and use something that's going to be less intuitive, uh, to customize than Dunst is. Dunst is good. Um, I haven't customized my Dunst in a while. I think it's still using the Grubbox theme. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I kind of forgot about it. All right, so um, my next one, it's, it's going to be between two. All right, I'm going to go with Pulse Mixer. Now, mm-hmm. uh, I, you wouldn't think that an audio chooser application would be all that interesting, but... If you know anything about Linux and audio, you know that when you deal with a lot of sources, Linux sucks in terms of audio. Like every time you plug in a new source or you need to change source or something like that, it's not a good experience because Pulse Audio randomly chooses different sources when it feels like it. I I mean, it's just the dumbest thing. And... It doesn't happen all the time, but every once in a while, you'll notice at the beginning of the, like if we do a live show, uh, Tyler will notice that I tap my microphone to make sure that I'm actually recording from my microphone because sometimes uh, Pulse Audio has switched to the microphone on the webcam, which is just, I mean, first of all, why do webcams have fucking microphones? Uh, (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) I mean, if you're not going to do something good... Don't do it at all. Let me save 20 bucks by not having a microphone. You know, <laughs> it would make so much more sense. Anyways, Pulse Mixer is a terminal-based application that allows you to control Pulse Audio. Not only volume, but also default sources. And I have it attached to a scratch pad because, of course, I do. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so I, pay, I Super N brings up Pulse Mixer, and I can go through and change to the source, or I can make sure the source that I need is automatically there. I don't have to worry about having a a GUI back end to Pulse Audio, which is, what is that, P-A-C-T- PACTL control or something? Yep. I don't know. Uh, that's the way I used to do it. And I'd have to open up Rofi, open up that thing, hunt through the tabs to find the certain place that I needed to search for. Uh, Pulse Mixer just has that in the terminal. And as we all know, anything in the terminal is automatically better. Yep. True story. Facts. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, your fifth and final one. I think I think we're on the fifth and final one. Yep. Excellent. So my final one is actually going to be a very simple program. And again, I think we've talked about before. If we haven't, most people know about it. CMUS. Uh, if you're looking for a music player, a dedicated music player, and you want something that's customized, it's... I wouldn't say highly customizable. I, I I know some people would debate me there. CMOS is pretty customizable, but I don't think it's... It might be very customizable, but it's not as easy as something... As a lot of other things, like Ranger is a little bit more easy to customize, get um, do a whole bunch of different things with. 
But that being said, CMOS, well, for one, Ranger and CMOS are two totally different things. But right. either way, um, uh, CMOS is a very good music player. And, um, it's honestly surprised me with how fast it can pull in a large music directory. Um, I, I thought that it was probably going to have a little bit more issue, but I've, I've used it. My music library is not massive, but I've, I've had friends who have much larger music libraries than me and it, does a good job of pulling it in, pulls it in really fast. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for a music player, CMOS is my favorite one. CMOS is not my favorite, but I be it's because I fought tooth and nail to set up NCMPCPP. Uh, I mm -hmm. think I got that name right. And that's a, that's a front end for MPD, which is good. Uh, but it's harder than hell to set up because there's no good mm -hmm. tutorials out there. And I probably should, take care of that and make a actually a good tutorial but i have no clue how i got it set up right uh <laughs> i did it ages ago and now it's just a matter of t copying my config files over but yeah that's the one that i use it's like it, it, i think it's better because it is uber customizable like way more than cmos is. and you know me in racing so mm -hmm. uh, anyways uh my last one is uh God, I don't want to choose a not a, a proprietary one, but I'm gonna have to. Uh, so my last one is Git Kraken. Now, I don't use Git as prolifically as a like a developer would, but I go through and have a ton of repos that I have. Most of them dot files and stuff like that. And uh, I'm also not the most proficient at using Git in the terminal. Uh, I couldn't tell you how to set up an SSH key for Git. I figured it out one time, and then I distro hopped and could never figure it out again. So uh, I, I'm sure it's easy. I just don't want to do it because laziness. Why? <laughs> um, so I was looking into front ends for Git, and there's a couple of them. One of them is called Lazy Git. That's terminal based, and I used that for a while, but it's not intuitive like at all um and so i sh looked at git kraken git kraken is proprietary but it's also really good i mean it's like literally the most intuitive thing you've ever set up uh you you connect it to your github account it has all your re repos there if you want or you, you can attach them to folders that are already on your or your repositories that are already on your computer it syncs them up you can go through and do everything you would normally do with Git, including track issues, do uh, like side by side comparisons and stuff like that, the diffs. Um, so I mean, you can literally do everything you do on can do on Git right in a GUI. Uh, now, normally, I'm not a GUI guy, but this is one of those things where I've attached to a scratch pad because, of course, I did, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and it's just uh, it's there. It's so good. Um, yeah, so that's Git Kraken, uh, and you get all the features for free. Like they have a paid account, but you don't need it. I mean, Ooh, you can do okay. all, the, all the stuff. I wish that it was open source, but it is not, sadly. All right. So uh, that is it for our apps. I'm going to go ahead and have a skip the picks of the week because, well, Tyler used his. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. So we'll save those for another time. We can end this podcast under an hour, under 45 minutes, probably for the first time in ever ever <laughs> like, ever like, and that, that included a couple you know a couple tangents but nothing you know i mean we couldn't have a podcast without at least one i mean that'd be exactly they'd be, they'd, they'd be worried about us i mean <laughs> there'd be obviously <laughs> something wrong somebody would be holding us hostage or something all right anyways before we go i should take a moment to thank my current patrons uh, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2, S1, 2, Patrick, Ellen, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Knife Tool, Steve, A, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, and the BSTs Rock. Uh, coming up next week is Challenge Week. It's not going to be that cool Rice Wars thing. Uh, but we're going to be, we've been challenged by Tyler to install GitLab and host it ourselves. I believe that was the challenge, right? Yep. Uh, so just a brief update. Have you started yet? Uh, yes and no. I have started getting a Docker um, image of GitLab running. However, I have run into an issue on it, and so I'm going to have to get rid of. Um, well, I'm going to have to get rid of another Docker image, and then try and redoing it with Docker. And if that doesn't work, 
screw it. I just won't use Docker. I'll just set it up myself. <laughs> okay, so I haven't even looked at how to do it yet. Okay, so I'm, I have not started. But that's because I've been uh, cobbling together the hardware that I need to do. I was just going to do it on a laptop back there, but I've decided I have an other, another computer, like a desktop computer. But I needed a monitor, but I didn't want to spend money on an actual, like, brand new monitor. So I'm going to use an old 27-inch HP. The problem is that computer, the graphics card, doesn't have any VGA ports. So I had to get a de develop uh, uh, an adapter. It came today. <laughs> so um, my uh, evening, after I edit the podcast and record another video, uh, will be spent pulling that laptop off from the standing desk hauling the monitor out of there, rebuilding that computer because it's going to need to be cleaned and stuff. Um, and then figuring out a distro that I want to use to put on there, probably mm -hmm. like Ubuntu or something, because uh, I'm going to use it as like a little bit of a server. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, then I can get started on the challenge. Uh, now that you've mentioned Docker, I'm scared to death because I've mm -hmm. never once in my entire life used Docker before. So, uh, I Well, I will go ahead and call your fears because I was really scared about Docker. Docker makes uh, setting up stuff like NextCloud and uh, GitLab very simple. You install Docker and then you will go to uh, Docker Hub, I think is what it's called. Um, and you'll get images from there and you just essentially use like Docker install and then the or whatever it is, like there'll be a command on whatever app that you want to get. Like you can go to Docker Hub, search GitLab, and then it'll tell you like it'll have a command that you copy paste in the terminal and it'll have Docker install GitLab for you. And then you can go through and um, learn how to run the Docker image and then set up uh, or interact with a Docker image from there. OK, um, oh. I'm less scared now but i'm still quite <laughs> fearful of it because it just kind of uh, it, it seems scary so i've never done that before so that'll be very interesting to see now um we will have to talk before next week to see how we're going to actually uh maybe are we just going to talk about it or are we going to uh try to go through and um actually show this i'm not sure you know, oh well i mean we i mean if you wanted to show yours i mean we, we could do that I could, but i I think Probably it's just like going to be SSH interesting to that machine or something and show some of the stuff, right? Well, um, as soon as you, as soon as you get it up and running, you should be able to go to, um, that like from your home network, um, just type in that computer's IP address and the port and like, it might, it, it'll probably be like port 8080 or something like that. But, um, uh, you, you can actually go in there and you should be able to get a GitLab like website, but it's just your dedicated repository okay. on there. Yeah. That's what we'll do then. Uh, that'll be an it will be an interesting challenge this next week getting that set up. Uh, nothing like saving it to the last minute as usual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, Wednesday night, you realize I'm going to begin getting on Discord. Hey Tyler, uh -huh. what do you think about pushing this back to another week? <laughs> you know that's going to happen, right? It's just it's so. Yep. I mean, it's just going to happen. All right. Anyway, so that is it for us this week. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe, all that stuff, and uh, we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. Bye.